Hey guys, Joey here, and if you've seen some of my most recent videos, you'll know that we're on a post-production kick here at JST. Today, I'm gonna cover how to make post-production feel more unique by manipulating samples to create something totally new. Everyone wants to have their own sound as a producer, and it's important to bring something fresh to the table when working with clients. There's nothing like putting out a mix and having people ask, how did you get that sound? Your clients will feel like they hired someone really knowledgeable and irreplaceable. I'm gonna cover four types of post-production elements here. Risers, impacts, ambience, and rhythm loops. Each of these can be molded to fit your mixing style. Let's start with the riser. A riser is a sound that increases in pitch and energy over a certain length of time. If we just drop a riser into a mix, it's gonna sound like this. When do we let this die? When did the spark slip of the rise? And that sounds great, but we can enhance this effect with some manual chopping. Let's start here and cut this section into eighth notes. Next emotions, when do we let this die? When did As we get closer to the end, let's make even smaller cuts to add excitement. I'm gonna go to 16th notes. When did the spark slip of the Once these drums come in, they're doing the job of getting us ready for the drop. So let's leave the riser uncut here. We really don't wanna pull attention away from the most important mix element anyway. Now our chopped riser sounds like this. So full of mixed emotions, when do we let this die? When did the spark slip of the rise? To take it a step further, we can start to play with the stereo field. Let's add a pan automation to get some extra movement. I want the panning to go from left to right slowly at first and then faster as our chops come in. There's some auto panning plugins out there that you can try, but I like to do this manually. I'm going to use Reaper's LFO automation to create a sine wave automation. This just means that the pan oscillates smoothly between two points. Check out how much movement and tension this added. For dramatic effect, I'm gonna leave this last section right in the center. This helps emphasize our downbeat without any distracting effects. Now, if you really wanna go crazy with risers, I have a cool technique to show you. You can create a totally unique riser right from your own song. Bounce your song out, even if you're not done with it. Since I already bounced this, we're just gonna duplicate the track. Now cut the first bar of the next section out, and we're gonna reverse that. Add some reverb, 100% wet. Reverse it again. Now do a pitch bend envelope from negative 12 or negative 24 semitones over the riser and cut it at the start, of course. It's gonna sound like this. No one in the world will ever have that riser unless they're mixing the exact same song at the exact same part. It's totally unique. Impacts are a great way to bring in a new part. Check out this section here. We need something to transition from these heavy drums to the more ambient stuff. So I'm gonna layer a slam with a little lead in right here on this downbeat. We wanna make sure that the transient of this clip is aligned with the downbeat here. To help add some personality, I'm gonna use JS Delay and Reverseness to make that hit last longer and to give it a cool tone. The two things we're gonna to touch on here are the length, which controls how quick the signal repeats, and the edge overlap, which controls how long the repetitions go. It's a subtle effect, but it does have its own character. We can take this even further with a little EQ. I'm gonna do a narrow boost, and then I'm gonna sweep around until I hear it match the tuning of the song. That sounds cool. Now, just back off the volume, and we've got a nice boost that helps this part stand out. To add texture, we can use a multiband saturator like Saturn on the same frequency range.
I think this tonality works best. Now the last thing to do is to set our drive amount in the context of the mix. Awesome! That really makes this impact feel custom for this transition. Ambience is great for filling the background of a song where there's not a lot going on. Just dropping in an ambience sample sounds like this. That sounds cool, and you could just loop it for this entire intro with crossfades to fill in all of this space, but if we want to transform the sample into something original, we could try a few things. Rather than looping our ambience, we can stretch it all the way from the beginning to where the drums come in. The only thing to worry about with stretching is introducing artifacts, so how far you can reasonably stretch a clip kind of depends on the sample and how far you're taking it. Since it's going to be something in the background anyway, I'm really not too worried about that here. Even wanna know, so I just leave it all alone. But how did it get this way between? Now that we've got the length figured out, let's experiment with adding motion to the whole sample. I'm gonna use JS four tap phaser to slowly phase the clip. This helps clean up any weird artifacts while also making the ambience feel more alive. I don't wanna believe it, hiding between the lines until I saw in my own life. There's one more cool trick that we can do with ambience too. If we automate the formant of our pitch shifter, we can get a riser effect out of our ambience. Just before the end of the clip, let's raise the formant. This is a great way to add utility to our ambience by letting it do two jobs at once. Now that we've completely transformed our samples, let's listen back to our work. Pay attention to how much personality is added between the raw samples and our finished product. So far we've covered a bunch of techniques to personalize your samples, but let's do a final demonstration. I'm going to show you how much a rhythmic loop, like this one, can be transformed using a combination of chopping, reordering, pitching, reversing, and more. Before I start, there's this Reaper script that I really love by Xrain that simply halves the length of an item and duplicates it, creating a stutter effect that sounds like this. Pretty awesome, right? You'll see me using this a lot. Now, I'm gonna let this play and start using these tools. The idea is to just have fun with it. Let's see how crazy we can get. Love it. This is honestly one of my favorite things to do. For comparison, let's hear what we started with. And here's the end result. Of course, you don't have to go this far. 
Sometimes you just want to emphasize certain beats or maybe make different fills. As long as you're chopping to the grid, things should line up nicely. I hope this gave you some ideas on how to make your post-production sound more like you. There are an infinite number of ways that you can transform these samples, so go crazy. What are some techniques that you use to make post-production samples more personal? I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, hit subscribe, and don't forget to tap that notification bell to get notified when we upload new videos. Until next time, happy mixing.